Hello and uh, welcome to our Lunch and Learn uh, webinar, um, the Series 5, but this is uh, um, number uh, two in, in the series. Uh, today, uh, myself, Scott Berry and Sh Sean Coomber, my colleague, we're going to go through building models and, and room layouts and, and cover sort of various aspects of um, the, the virtual building concept. For those of you uh, who didn't see the, the first presentation, if we um, just sort of recap, the virtual building concept, which is a trademark of, of Graphisoft, um, stores all relevant information um, in a central database. So from that information, we can generate very quickly documentation, so sections, elevations, uh, details, schedules, uh, views for presentation, that sort of thing. Um, what we're doing um, in this presentation is taking it from the conceptual model stage through to um, planning. The first uh, presentation um, was recorded um, a couple of weeks ago. Um, we've actually put that on our YouTube channel, which you can see here, uh, youtube.com forward slash ADLAEC. Um, the existing site, um, what it, that shows you is how we imported site, site data, looking at um, things like zones for conceptual modeling. And then what we're looking to do going forward into the third um, uh, webinar as part of this series is to replace the conceptual uh, modeling, start with the things like the house types and actually then to work it up for, for, for planning stage. You'll notice as well today that we've decided to actually use uh, Archicad as an interface as more of a, a desktop publishing package rather than actually using sort of PowerPoint. So you'll see here we're actually driving um, some of the, the graphical information through the, the view map, which Sean will uh, go through in, in more detail uh, with you now. So if I just pass you over to Sean, um, he's going to cover uh, um, parts of the, the product um, which includes uh, generating views, looking at production information, uh, creating sort of elevations, looking at things like 3D cutaways uh, and 3D documents, which are a really uh, fantastic way of actually presenting um, ideas, not just to clients, but also to contractors as well, being able to generate information on the fly, um, recapping on dorm window schedules um, and looking at then at um, things like room data sheets through through zones. So. I'll pass you over to Sean and uh, I'll come back to you uh, at the end of the, the webinar just to, to conclude. Thank you. So since the previous webinar, we've um, now designed the various house types that sit on the site plan. Um, where, where we left off in the first webinar, we had a site plan with the conceptual models. And now we've got the more detailed designs. Uh, and this is one of the examples of that house type. As part of the virtual building, um, we can then start taking the drawings from this 3D model. So over here in our navigator, we're in the first button at the top, which is the project map. And this gives us a breakdown of all of the different parts of that model, all of the different stories, sections and elevations uh, and so on. So as we move between these different parts of the model, we can see, for example, the floor plans, the sections, elevations, We've just got the single elevation at the moment, interior elevations, through to the details. So we can just jump between the different parts of the model and the floor plans, sections, elevations and interior elevations all come directly from the model and then the details have a little bit more working up in 2D over the top. Next we've got the view map. So the view map is where we can start to define um, the appearance of those various parts of the model for export. We could be looking at a floor plan for example. Um, if I just open up one of the floor plans in here and it could be more of a planning stage model. So this floor plan within the marketing part of the view map, uh, we're currently looking at a 1 to 50 scale. We've got a specific layer combination set up called marketing plans, and that will load the layers that are relevant for this particular type of drawing. We've got a particular model view option set up, and this filters certain aspects of the level of detail within the drawing. So for example, 
uh, whether we want to see uh, symbols for columns and reference lines for beams and levels of details for certain components such as the doors and windows. As it's a planning stage model we've just got a simple level of detail for now. And also the graphic overrides. So we've got this marketing graphic override which is set up with a planning style and that's just showing a solid hatch over the top of all of the cuts through this model. So though we're looking at this in the 2D model, it's generated from a horizontal cut through the building. And this applies to each story within the building. So we've got the ground floor, first floor, and the second floor within the roof space. We can also go to our production drawings just underneath. And if we open up the floor plans within this part of the view map, we've got some slightly different filters applied. So this time we've got uh, slightly different layers set up. So we can see different information within the model. We, we can't see any of the fixtures and fittings in this. It's more of a, a building regs drawing, uh, but we do have extra uh, construction detail showing in labels. We've got a different level of detail for things like the windows and doors. So in this drawing here, we've got the more detailed display for those building components. And we no longer have the graphic override showing the solid fills, so we can actually see the construction information within those composites. Underneath the floor plans, we've got the, product, the section production drawings. So these drawings are just taken by creating a section line through the building model. And if we zoom in, we can see these various construction elements that are designed as composite structures and then the section line showing that level of detail. We can also see um, information in the background. So the sections can be set up with a zero depth view or we can see the elements in the background. And we also have some detail markers, which we'll come back to in a moment. And here's another example of one of the sections. Here's an elevation from the model. And just underneath that, we've got the details. So these, these details are actually uh, generated from the 3D model. And then we've got some additional information drawn over the top. So what we can do is show which detail marker this was generated from. And then we can actually look at this detail with the section as a reference underneath. So we can see whereabouts in the model that's been generated. Okay, if we wanted to create a new, a new section, what we could do, or a new elevation, what we could do is open up one of the elevation drawings. This is just a slightly different presentation for the elevation. This is one that we've set up with um, a color view and some additional graphics drawn over the top. If you want to create another elevation in this style, what we can do is we can go to the elevation marker, copy the settings for it with the pipette, and then as we draw an additional elevation and set the direction, that will automatically get added to the navigator. And we now have the rear elevation, if I just rename that. That's now been generated in the same the same drawing style as the first one. We can also apply the same filter that we did for the initial elevation and show you that as just an outline drawing. So now if we jump across into the 3D window, I'll show you some more uh, presentation techniques. One is with the cutting planes. So we can take a cut through the 3D model. And another nice presentation tool is to convert this into a 3D document. So if we right click on the 3D documents and create a new one from the 3D window, what this will do is it will now explode it into a 2D drawing. Uh, just like with the sections and elevations, we can control the hatching and um, display of surface colors and so on. And also start adding annotations and labels such as this one, which will display the skin list. So that's now displaying a list of all of the materials within that particular structure. Same for the wall types and the roof types.
I'm just going to open up one of the schedules. Once we've started, got, um, once we've got our building model complete, we can start taking the information that we need from that model, such as the door schedules. So this door schedule lists each door type within the model. We've got uh, just one of this door type, uh, eight of this door type, and we can check any of those within the model. So if we wanted to see all eight of these in the 3D window, for example, we could select this door type and highlight those in 3D. So it's easy to identify those. And if we were to make any changes to these doors within the schedules, for example, the dimensions or fire ratings or so on, that would automatically update that door type throughout the model. Right. This is a different way of presenting the, the door information. So the first one displayed it more graphically. This one's displaying it by door type and then giving extra information for which story it's located on and the particular zone within the building and the dimensions. That's giving a sub total for each door type for the total at the end. And similarly for the window schedules, we can look at those in a graphical way. Or we can look at those with um, the more text-based format. If we make any changes back in the model, so I'll just go back into the 3D window. We'll turn our cutting planes back off. And what we can do is select our windows and change those for a different window type. When we go back into our schedules, we can see that they've now updated to the new window type. So we've substituted those from a double slash window to a single slash window. And finally, if we go across to the zones, we can start looking at information on the specific rooms within the building. So this is just going back to one of the floor plans, but this time we're displaying the zone information. For each of these spaces, we've got a, an ID number and a name, and it's also giving the area of that space. These can be divided into different zone categories. At the moment in this building, we're just looking at the at a residential space zone category for each of these zones, but we can create different zone categories, which can display different color co codes within the building. And these zones will also filter through into the schedules, so we can start displaying this, the data from these zones. For example, a list of room names with their zone category and the area, with a total area at the bottom, or by listing the zones uh, by story, and this is giving a total floor plan area per story within that particular house type.